everyone wants to know who will win the robotaxi race. It's a huge prize. Trillions of dollars are at stake. There are dozens of companies um, competing to, to win robotaxi and to get to self-driving. And they've invested over $100 billion in total. So I have new key insights that will tell who will win, why they will win, when they will win, and how much will the, the payoff be. And this will also have tracking information, new tracking information that will help cut through all the noise. Although this is not investment advice, if you can know who's going to win Robotaxi, that could tell you who would be a, a, a stock or a company that could 10x or 100x. You know, again, not investment advice, but it is something that could be hugely important if you can get the confidence to know who will be the big winners in something that could be making close to a trillion dollars by 2030. Why is it such a big deal? ARK Invest, um, um, fund the magazine about $50 billion of high-tech funds, projects that it'll become trillions of dollars, um, perhaps $11 trillion market for, for self-driving. When you get rid of the driver, then you can have an Uber-like system for a half or a quarter of the cost. So instead of $2, $3 per mile, you'll be down at um, $0.50, cents, $0.25 cents per mile. It will change transportation, bring the cost down for, for everything. And by looking at the, the, all the videos online, seeing what uh, Mobileye is doing, all the technology, it's confusing as to who's winning. You have some information like uh, mile between disengagements, like how long can a human let the car drive before it does something crazy and has to take over, before it makes a mistake. But that information is not particularly useful in terms of really knowing who's winning because it's just too complicated. So how can we get a better insight into what's happening? It, it helps actually to go forward a bit and then come backwards and go forwards. Uh, so going forward, at some point, we're going to have robotaxis passing Uber, right? Uber, Lyft, the ride-hailing services, Uber has about 3 million drivers, and they're bringing their cars with them. In general, Uber does not own the cars. They got people to use their cars for the job. So they cover some of the expenses that way. So 3 million Uber drivers, roughly equal to about 1 million robotaxis. Robotaxis can do more than a uh, Uber car because they can drive around the clock. Although we don't want to overestimate this because driving at night, yes, there's still some activity, but actually not much because people aren't, they're sleeping. They're not, most people are sleeping. They're not actually driving the car. But two shifts um, and also getting weekend, you're looking at 100 hours a week, you know, pretty active two and a half times. But again, you're having a bit of tail off at, during the non-peak hours. So one million robotaxis. And but they're driving 30 to 50, maybe 100 uh, billion miles, okay? Because a robotaxi fully utilized, more utilized than, a, than an Uber car, would be driving up to 100,000 miles a year. Um, but maybe it's only 50,000 because of, you know, logistics of, you know, getting all the rides and stuff like that. So those are some key, key numbers. One million robotaxis and... 30 to 50 billion miles driven, paid miles driven. You can also drive around to pick someone up, but you're not charging for that. And then it'll initially be cheaper than Uber and Lyft, say about about $52. You have to undercut them. There'll be a bit of price war. How much can the other guys come down in price to offset it? We can look at how long it took Uber to, to displace a large part of the taxi market. It took about three or four years of scaling. You know, once they had a substantial business model established, the main disruption period was about three to four years to get to the point where, and but they haven't even killed off all the taxis. You know, and then the pricing varies and, and stuff like that. So, three to four years. So you're looking at getting to the point where you have a million robo taxis. If you're buying all the robo taxis, like you know, Baidu or uh, Apollo, uh, Apollo um, uh, startup, 
they're looking to the plan is to say we're going to buy 10,000 to 100,000 robo taxis every year and then we will get to the point of a million robo taxis in about like 10 ish years right so a substantial ramp to get to that point tesla does it entirely different and they you know have a different system for it which we'll discuss a bit more later but you know getting to that scale is not easy and if it's let's say fifty thousand dollars per car a million cars that's fifty billion dollars someone's got to pay for a fifty million dollars worth of robot um you know, the vehicle part and all the parts so then with the again you know, let's start working back from there so everyone except uh, tesla is using lidar that's laser radar we can see some of the images here where it gives you the outline of objects it lets you know hey there's something uh like a vehicle x distance away i can see it with my laser radar i can know okay i need to avoid that thing so it helps to avoid collisions um tesla chooses not to use laser radar because it uses cameras which the, the thinking is we can drive with our eyes which are like cameras and our brain which are like the the artificial intelligence system and so then and all the rules are designed for that so then they think that would be good enough everyone is using at least cameras and ai but others use ultrasonics millimeter wave radar and, and lidar for it the latest uh, system from apollo uses 32 sensors eight of which are lidar that's a key point eight are lidar for that Maybe you only need three if you're using a driver assist lidar based system, but looking at eight for a full robo taxi, you know, scanning around behind whatever that needs to be done to make sure that they don't run into stuff. So, one of the key points, insights that is critical to understand that is not, you know, what the technology to the work. Let's leave that aside. Is there enough lidar? In 2021, there were about 100,000 to 250,000 automotive grade lidars made okay there's also lidar using drones and other things but automotive grade lidar 150,000 and there's 80 companies working on it but thinking you can't necessarily swap I, I'm using this kind of lidar and I can just use company B's company Z's company uh lidar I can't I'm, I'm Ford or I'm Cruise or whoever you know I've been using a particular component you know swapping in and out you know, there'd be adjustments to, to be done, which we saw that problem with the semiconductors, where we have a shortage of cars because they were short of semiconductors. And unlike Tesla, which could write new firmware, new lower level software in a few weeks so they can use other suppliers, companies like um, Ford could not. They needed, you know, a year, two years to redesign things to, to try and switch, and they didn't switch. So to say that these other companies can switch components on a different thing, but we got a 200,000 some LIDAR. If you need eight for a robo taxi, then the most uh, robo taxis you can have with that supply is about 25,000, right? Which is roughly the number. We have a few thousand in California, some in Phoenix, various other um, projects in, in China, right? So collectively, all these 20, 30 companies doing robo taxis with LIDAR are using this supply. And I think it's probably only 100,000 they've deployed into the field, which means about like 10,000 vehicles. Okay. They're looking to scale fast, but they have not done it and the LIDAR does not exist. So they're making new factories. And again, it's like I, they have to pre order. They have to spend a bunch of money to build up the LIDAR factories, spend a year or two to make at least a year to build the LIDAR factory that's not producing new LIDAR. And the LIDAR technology is changing, right? They had a a few years ago, they had the $40,000 LiDAR. Now you have solid state LiDAR down in the thousand, even $200 range. So cheap and more affordable, but the transition, right? And if I you know, want to eventually stabilize on the system. So to get to 1 million robotaxi with LiDAR, you'll need 8 million at least uh, LiDAR units. And they would be seemingly from you know, dozens, if, you know, 80, maybe 100 companies make all these different LiDAR. So eventually there'll be a few of the dominant ones. Seems like maybe, um, you know, this, you know, some of these Chinese companies seem to be, you know, making large volumes. So, you know, because they have to get the people who are purchasing it, they have to like make the bet to, to buy these vehicles. 
So I said they've already spent $100 billion. All these companies in the game and serious are spending two to $4 billion per year, if not more, because they have 3,000 people working on the programming. And they said it's low salaries, you know, maybe billion dollars, then you're spending it in the hardware. So it's not an easy game to be in. And then as you get closer towards going to robo-taxi Uber level, then you're going to start upping your ante, you know, $5 billion, $10 billion a year, $15, $20 billion a year to get to my total of $50 billion in, in four or five years to scale up, right? And the money that they're earning is tiny. They have a few million rides, you know, right now in, in small geofence locations. So this question of who doesn't go broke is a, a serious question. They also, we're going to recession. We had a recession. Stock prices are down. So then all these other companies are, you know, having to make these big bets. And they say, you know, if I'm Google, I'm worried about my core business, you know, am I still putting non-trivial amounts of like five, $10 billion every year into this, into way more or something else. And then there's also the issue of, um, you know, the, the legacy car companies, the Volkswagens, the Toyotas, the, the Ford, the GM, if they're losing money because they're losing, not getting enough of the switch to electrification, electric EVs, they get financially weaker. So ha having not much money in your business plan, having a recession, having to pay more and more is the question of who survives to the end. Like even if your technology can work, how do you get to the end? And Argo AI, which had um, Volkswagen and Ford put in a combined about $4 billion into it, was one of the top five, according to the metrics of, you know, distance between disengagements, distance between uh, system making an error where a human had to take over. And Argo, they pulled the plug on it. They said, okay, it's going to be five years until we get to level four, don't need a human driving. So they said, we'll concentrate just in the driver assist portion of things. That's what Ford's new plan is. So Argo AI was the top leader in in LiDAR and Ford made the assessment that they were at least five years away. So is you know Cruise and, and Waymo maybe a little better, but you know, are they how much were they ahead of Argo? A year? So then at least four years to get to the point where something would work. And then in parallel, how are you upping your ante to spend more, to make more LiDAR, to make more robo taxis? So how can we tell who's ahead? If we look at miles driven with the systems and expanded uh, locations, then we can get a, a better idea and a more arbitrary, because we're, we're reporting, okay, we're doing a million miles a, a quarter, say from Waymo. Tesla saying they're doing 10 million miles with um, full self-driving, not including the billion the miles they do with autopilot. So that would indicate that Tesla head based on miles driven, Tesla also will let you drive most anywhere with FSD, uh, the full self-driving system, their, what they call their system. Um, and they're going off beta shortly. They've just released version 11, which will have um, a single stack for merging highway and city driving. So that's important because previously the 10 million miles was all city driving, not on highway, because on highway they were using autopilot. So now with the new software, the, they'll count those miles and the, presumably it's, it's a superior system because it's switching over from it for highway and city. So that will then be I said, 10 million miles a quarter, more like 30, 40 million miles per quarter, even just by saying, okay, I'm using the new software without changes in behavior. But if it's better, maybe they're using more. But how do we know that they're really doing well with it? If they're using 160,000 testers and they're only doing 10 million miles, that means they're only about... 2% of the time that people are driving with it. So most of the time people aren't using it. So that we can use the miles to determine how much things are being used. And it won't be, we know we get into a call solution as they get towards say 500 million miles with 160,000 cars. That would mean that it's being used all, most all the time, right? There could be reason someone doesn't want to use it all the time. Maybe they love driving. So at least getting to half that number would start showing a system is highly confident that people are comfortable using it and, and using it a lot. Same thing for the other guys. If they're giving out rides, they need to have something that people really love and want to use. So then 
if they put 10,000 cars into one city and say, okay, we've gotten to scale in New York or Shenzhen or wherever they're going, or San Francisco, Phoenix, they need to be getting to hundreds of millions of miles driven, right? That would mean that they're dominating that thing. Because if you can't win in one city, you're not winning in the world. So the miles driven cuts away a lot of the, the BS, okay? So, so, so we have to see these key questions then. Is there enough LIDAR? Who's getting to, to 1 million robotactives? And whose business model will let you win? Tesla is already getting profits and money from autopilot and full self-driving. They're making billions of dollars from that. So Elon must bet to put the hardware into the cameras and the, the computer chips into every car since 2017 is now paying off. So now they have 3.5 million cars. By the end of next year, they'll have 6 million cars. Most are not using FSD, but the, all the hardware is there. So if they get it good enough, people say, oh, yes, I will turn it on and it's ready to go on. The other guys have to make a robotactic and convince people to get in it. They have to make the robotactic wait for, for people to do it. So the whole business model is that they don't make the, the other LiDAR robotactic guys most of them are not making money until they're at least 20% as big as, as Uber, right? Maybe 50% as big as Uber. So that, so that means that they have to, you know, four years to get it working, four years to scale, eight years of carrying losses until they, they reach the promised land, okay? So that's a, a long way to go. While Tesla can make money all along the way. Who else is making money all along the way? Mobilize very close to profitability, and these are close to profitability because they make parts, either the chips like NVIDIA or Mobileye making chips and the cameras and the, and the other components. Um, and Mobileye is fairly dominant. Um, the latter guys might get to that point, but right now they're competing tooth and nail with 80 other LiDAR providers. So eventually you have one that's making a fair bit of money, and also they can make money, like I said, from the not robo taxi, but driver assistance vehicles. So th this is the, the key insight: is that you have to look at lidar, you have to look at the miles, you have to look at getting to scale, you know, look at, at who's not going broke getting there, and who's you know making money and getting the miles now. So those are the key insights that that break down what is happening with something that will be trillions of dollars, but getting there is first gain to a million, which is about $40 billion. A million robot is $40 billion. And the other thing is that Tesla, because they have their customers buying the vehicle, they're selling FSD to them, they can all opt in. So again, instead of making money, just having them use FSD, they can roll them into a network like they do for solar and power walls where they make virtual power plants where 4,000 customers give a utility like PG&E um, power dur during downtimes. They can aggregate all these people into like an Airbnb network of, of robotaxi without spending the money to buy the vehicles. They just have to loop it all together in, a, um, in an app. So, you know, that's the superiority of the, of the business models that they have. I see this basically, the Tesla's on track to, to be really good at solving robotaxi level in 2024, 2025. But they're making more and more money with FSD along the way. I have detailed projections of that. I can go with that in another video. Um, I can also sponsor me on um, Patreon, uh, and I can um, provide you know a PowerPoint deck and and detailed discussions about all this data where I lay out you know I can lay out year by year how I think things will play out in the ranges of possibility because you know we can't predict the future, but we can get into a range, know what's the minimum level, maximum level of how things can happen. Um, so um, support me on Patreon, uh, link, uh, subscribe and like this video, and we'll talk to you next time.